stone. We even have Adam circumambulate it, like a good Muslim, for a thousand years, helping to justify Islamic ritual. Muhammad was not only the world's worst prophet, he was the world's most transparent liar. Now all Muhammad needed to do was connect the Kaaba to Abraham so he could rationalize Islam's reliance on the Hebrew Bible. With the Bible snagged, he had himself a religion. Tabari. That jewel was lifted up until Allah sent Abraham to rebuild the house. This is meant by Allah's word, and we established for Abraham the place of the house as residence. This would become Quran 22:26. Muhammad was as predictable as sunrise. In the actual test, there is a re in parentheses before build. In the creation account, Allah built the Kaaba himself. Then it was built by Adam. Now we are told that Abraham built it. So I ask you, how many times should a prophet be allowed to contradict himself before he is no longer considered a prophet? The legends behind the Kaaba are essential to Islam. If they don't make sense, neither does the religion. Tabari. Allah founded the house together with Adam. Adam's head was in heaven while his feet were upon the earth. The angels were afraid, so his size was reduced to sixty cubits, or thirty meters. Adam was sad because he missed the angelic songs. He complained, and Allah said, Adam, I have cast down a house for you to circumambulate, as one circumambulates my throne. Adam came to the house, and he and the prophets after him circumambulated it. In this account, we have the Kaaba being built in heaven, and also being built cooperatively by Adam and Allah. Either way, it's a wonder the Islamic God would take credit for building something so crude and unsightly. Reducing Adam is a fairy tale, as is the desert forming between his strides and villages cropping up in his footsteps. So then, when does the make-believe world of Islam end and the real world begin? When do we move out of fiction and into non-fiction? Stated another way, can you trust a man who is willing to base his religion on stories this far-fetched? If he had to deceive us to make the Kaaba seem worthy of devotion, how could it be? Tabari. When Adam's size was lowered to sixty cubits, he started to say, My lord, I was your protege in your house, having no lord but you to protect me. There I had plenty to eat and could dwell wherever I wanted. But then you cast me down to this holy mountain. There I used to hear the voices of the angels and see them crowd around your throne and enjoy the sweet smell of paradise. Then you cut me off from these things. This is a confession. Muhammad saw himself as Allah's protege, if not Allah himself. He consistently looked for people to protect him. And as an orphan, he was deprived of food. His own tribe became so disgusted with his continual taunts, they made travel difficult for him. He was consumed with the desire to make Allah's house in Mecca both his and important. He indulged in the sweet smell of perfume and repeatedly claimed that he could hear the angels. What's more, his Quran is filled with complaints. Muhammad couldn't even keep his own twisted version of Adam Strait. Listen to this excerpt in which the Prophet's indulgences were falsely manifest in Adam. Tabari. He built for himself cities and castles, and populated them and made them prosperous. He also assembled weapons and established a cavalry. At the end of his life he became a tyrant. He took the name of Adam and said, If someone calls me by any other name, I shall cut off his hand. He married thirty women, and they gave him many offspring. He liked them and promoted them, so that later kings were their offspring. His realm expanded greatly. Muhammad just couldn't help himself. He used a twisted caricature of Adam to make his warped existence seem godly. Muslims want us to believe that Adam, like Muhammad, was a warrior, an unbridled libertine, a prophet, and a politician who hated nicknames. Yes, according to Islam, Adam was just like Muhammad. Tabari Adam and his descendants were prophets with royal authority and rulership on earth. Allah made him a prophet and a messenger to his children. He revealed to Adam twenty-one scrolls. Adam was taught them by Gabriel, who wrote them down with his own hand. 
Among the things Allah revealed to Adam was the prohibition against eating dead animals and pork. He also revealed to him the letters of the alphabet on 21 leaves. Writing began with pictures, not letters. And since we know it, how did it escape their God's grasp? Well, that's a detail. There's a bigger issue at stake. Muhammad's absurd and transparent bastardization of biblical characters was essential to establishing his credibility and thus to imposing his religion. Ultimately, exposing Muhammad's motivation for doing so is central to understanding the mess the world is in today. As we continue the story of the Islamic Adam, pay attention to three things. First, the details. Megalomaniacs are so full of themselves they get carried away. They present their preposterous notions as if they were divinely inspired. Second, the worst part of lying is remembering what you said. Most everything Muhammad reveals contradicts something he has or will profess. Third, each tradition invariably devolves into making Muhammad seem prophetic, or Mecca, its Kaaba, and ritual seem divine. Tabari. When Allah saw the nakedness of Adam and Eve, he commanded Adam to slaughter a ram from the eight couple of small cattle he had set down from paradise. Adam took its wool, and Eve spun it. He and Eve wove it. Adam made a coat for himself, and a shift and a veil for Eve. They put on that clothing. Then Allah revealed to Adam, I have a sacred territory around my throne. Go and build a house for me there. This time, the clothes weren't provided by Allah, nor made of leaves. And to spin and weave wool, one has to have a spinning wheel and a loom. Did Eve invent these? And speaking of Eve, in true Islamic fashion, we are led to believe she was made to wear a veil. Adam made it for her, even though they were the only humans on earth. Who was she hiding her face from? Adam said, Lord, how could I build a house? I do not have the strength, and I do not know how. Eve knows how to build a spinning wheel and loom from scratch, yet Adam can't pile rocks. And Muslims say that God made women stupid. So Allah chose an angel to assist him, and he went with him to Mecca. Tabari. Adam built the house with materials from five mountains, Mount Sinai, the Mount of Olives, Mount Lebanon, and Al-Judi. He constructed its foundation with materials from Mount Hira near Mecca. When he was finished with its construction, the angel went out with him to, to Arafat. He showed him all of the rites connected with the pilgrimage that people perform today. Then he went with him to Mecca, and Adam circumambulated the house for a week. Returning to the land of India, he died upon Mount Nude. I bet my life that if archaeologists examined the stones of the Kaaba, they'd find no evidence that they came from any of those faraway places, or that the construction dates to 4000 B.C. But the egregious lie was not without benefit. We have arrived at the motivation behind this fairy tale, the rites and rituals of Islam as they were adapted and ordered by Muhammad. Everything associated with the pilgrimage had pagan origins. Nothing was biblical. Muhammad knew the truth, but he was desperate to give the Hajj a holy spin. His career was dependent upon it, and lest we forget, in our quest to determine his veracity, in this version, Adam returns to India after a week of circumambulation. The last time we played this game, he continued to rotate until the flood. According to the third caliph, Umar, Tabari. While Adam was in India, Allah revealed to him that he should perform the pilgrimage to this house. As in, it already existed, and thus it didn't need to be built from the stones of four mountains. Then, eventually he reached the house, he circumambulated it, and performed all of the rites of the pilgrimage. He wanted to return to India. When he reached the mountain passes of Arafat, the place of Muhammad's farewell sermon, the angels met him and said, You have performed the pilgrimage faultlessly. This surprised him. When the angels noticed his surprise, they said, Adam, we have performed the pilgrimage to this house 2,000 years before you were created. And Adam felt properly chastised. Okay, so tell me, why did the angels go to Mecca to worship Allah if he lived in heaven? 
The pages that follow detail the origins of perfume and fruit. We'll take a pass 